Well, thank you. Uh, we're really pleased that you're all here this afternoon uh, for this feedback session, engagement session uh, around the Human Resources Design Project, the HR Design Project. My name is Harry Webney Behrman. I work on campus with the UW Office of Human Resource Development, and it's my privilege within this project to serve as the team lead for a team we call the Collaboration Team. The Collaboration Team is responsible within the HR Design Project for opportunities such as this, for the campus, for all of us as a community to be engaged in providing timely input, specific feedback, and useful recommendations so that we can get it right as we build a new HR system. This is really an opportunity that's rarely afforded to an organization like ours and to a university, and it's something that we now have an opportunity to do. And as we go forward, we've attempted to do it in a way that's also very unusual. We have attempted to do it in a way that really makes sure that all of us as a campus community have an opportunity to frame the issues, to participate in responding to the questions that need to be addressed, and then to provide feedback and critique of the ideas as they are drafted. There are over 150 members of our staff and faculty and students who have been involved for the last several months in the work teams that are the foundation of this project. And they continue to be involved as we frame recommendations that you will be reacting to this afternoon. The process this afternoon is one that we hope will be satisfying to you as a way of you providing that kind of input that we seek. We will be giving you an overview of the project and where we are in its formulation and what stages exist, both in terms of the reaction to ideas and the development of further details down the road. We will be giving you a summary of the specific recommendations that have been drafted by the different work teams that are what we call phase one work teams at this point. And then we will be asking you through smaller group discussions to be able to give feedback to those specific work teams regarding those recommendations. I'll detail that process for you in a little while, but that will be the bulk of our time. For now, thank you very much for being here. We very much appreciate it. I am privileged to introduce the Vice Chancellor for Administration at the University, Daryl Bazell. We're being efficient with the technology here. Uh, well, good afternoon, and, and thanks to all of you for being here with us this afternoon for this important um, input session and for dodging the raindrops um, to be here with us. Um, let me just amplify a couple of the comments that you just heard uh, from Harry. This is a unique and perhaps a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to design an HR system that really meets the specific needs of our institution. The chance to develop a recruitment system, a compensation system, a benefit system, and beyond um, is a rare opportunity, and we want to make sure that we're, we're getting it right. I think, as many of you know, we've been embarked this journey a number of months ago. There have been over 150 uh, of your colleagues across the campus working very hard to design um, the work product that you're going to hear about this afternoon. So I want to thank them um, for the effort they've put in to get us to this juncture. Today, as you've heard from here, is a very, very important day. Today is an opportunity for you to do two things. You have an opportunity to hear from Bob Levin and others around um, the recommendations that are, in fact, moving forward. But equally important, or perhaps more importantly, it's an opportunity for you to tell us where we fit the mark, where we've not. <laughs> and both are important. We want to make sure the things that you are validating, we, we retain. But the areas where we need to improve the product, we need to hear that feedback. We're quite a number of months away from finalizing that, that product. But the stage we're in right now is really, really important. I think this is, I think, the third of um, five input sessions over a two-week period. So I, I hope you take the opportunity today to, to listen carefully, but also to reflect your thoughts and provide that really, really critical feedback that we need as we move forward with our decision-making process. So with that, I just want to thank you again. I'm going to turn, turn things over to our HR director, Bob Lavinia. Thank you, Daryl. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, now I've seated the audience with some people who know to respond, so I'm going to try it again. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Daryl. Um, I want to also want to thank you for being here today on this rainy afternoon. As, as uh, both Harry and Daryl said, this is a very important opportunity 
for us. This is an extraordinary opportunity to create a new personnel and HR system designed specifically for the needs of our university, but it's also an extraordinary challenge because we have a lot of work to do over a relatively short period of time, and we will succeed only if the entire campus community works with us. And that's what this event is about. That's what an, the, the entire series of events that we've planned throughout the month of April are about, to engage in a conversation about the draft recommendations from the work teams, about what you want out of this new HR system, what your views, what your perspectives are, what your needs are, so we can together as a campus design this system so that it puts us in the best possible position to attract, develop, and retain the kind of talent we need to remain one of the world's great universities. So, so today, most of the time, will be devoted to having that conversation. But I want to take a few minutes and provide you with some background and also give you a pretty high-level summary of the, of the draft recommendations that we are asking you to react to today. So to give you some background, talk about the vision for the project. We spent a lot of time as a project team as well as working with our stakeholders to develop a vision statement. This is a fairly standard kind of statement, campus-wide effort to build more efficient and effective UW-Madison HRS system. But in addition to the statement, we also expanded on the vision statement. What does thoughtful design mean? We want to create an HR system for our university that is efficient so that each step in the process adds value. And I think one of the things we can agree on is not every step in the current personnel system on this campus adds value. So we want to focus on those processes that do add value. We want to create a system that is flexible and responsive, that can be adapted to a broad range of situations consistent with the complexity that we live with day to day on our, in, uh, on our campus. We want the HR system to be in alignment so that every aspect of the personnel system enables us to attract, develop, and retain talent. We want it to be consistent, as common to as many employees as possible, unless required by a specific business need. And we want the system to be as transparent as possible. So that's what we mean by thoughtful design. What are we trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve a workforce and community of the 21st century, diversity. Diversity that reflects not only the local community that we operate in, not only the diversity of Madison and Dane County, but reflecting the fact that we are a university that operates in a global community, and we want to reflect that diversity as well. We want to put in place systems that maximize the engagement of our colleagues so that the HR system enables us to be committed to the university, to the mission, and to our colleagues. We want to make sure that we're attracting the right talent. Clearly, we want to attract the best talent, but also people who can make that commitment to the mission of the university. And we want to create a workforce that is also adaptable. We are engaged in a process of developing an HR system that meets the challenges that we're aware of today. But we want to build a system that lasts, that can enable the university to address challenges that we have in even conceptualize right now. So that's the, um, the workforce and the community that we hope this HR system will create. And of course, all leading to achieving the mission of the university, the Wisconsin idea, model public university, resource to the public, and enhancing the quality of life, not just for the university, but for the state, the nation, and the world. So that's the vision. And we've asked each of our work teams, each of the 11 work teams, to evaluate their recommendations very specifically against this vision. And if you um, read the reports from the work teams, in a moment we'll tell you um, how to do that, you'll see that each of the teams explicitly addressed the vision in its analysis of the recommendations. We also are building this project around the employee life cycle. These are the four goals, the workforce and community of the 21st century, diversity, engagement, right talent, cultural fit, and adaptability. And the 11 teams are organized around the employee life cycle so that we can attract the best talent, we can retain those talented people, we can develop them, build their knowledge, skills, abilities, and competencies, advance them, create a system so that 
everyone understands what the advancement opportunities are and how to take advantage of them. And of course, when it's time for our employees to transition out of the university, we have put in place systems and processes to help them make that transition. So built around those four goals, but also the employee life cycle. Here is um, a, a kind of a high level view of how this project is going to play out over the next several months. And where we are right now, we have two sets of teams, phase one and phase two. The phase one teams, those are the recommendations we'll be talking about today, are in the review and refine stage. They've come up with their draft recommendations. We're now having the campus-wide conversation about those recommendations. At the end of this month, each of those seven teams will reflect on the feedback that they've received, and then they will refine their recommendations and um, reissue them early in May. And the phase two team will do that about a month later. Then the project team will spend the months of July and August synthesizing those recommendations, make sure they really do fit together. Um, and then we'll go back out to the campus review by campus stakeholders, including the governance groups, um, labor organizations, and the community uh, as a whole. And then we'll go outside of the university because we do need approval, of course, by the Board of Regents and also by the Joint Committee on Employment Relations. So that will take us through the end of the year. We are statutorily required to have this new system in place by July 1st uh, of 2013. So there's a lot that we'll need to do in um, the first six months of 2013 to achieve that July 1st milestone. Here is the way that we have phased the teams, seven in phase one and four in phase two. The phase one teams began their work um, mostly early in January. A couple of them got started late in December. So they've spent about three months evaluating the current personnel and HR system, figuring out what it needs to look like and how we get from where we are now to where we need to be. And they issued their recommendations on April 9th. And the phase two teams about a month behind, they're still in the process of developing their recommendation. And, and as Daryl said, we've got about 150 university employees involved in these 11 work teams and we've got around 15 more involved in the advisory committee, <clears throat> which includes representatives of, of all stakeholder groups. So let's talk a little bit, as I said, at, at a fairly high level on the recommendations, and then you'll have an opportunity uh, throughout the rest of this session to have a more engaged conversation uh, about the specific recommendations, but some background on them. We asked the teams to come up with recommendations for the conceptual design, the framework, of the new HR system. We did not ask them to dig into the details, the policies, the processes. We will have to do that over time, but what we're trying to do now is build a consensus around what this system is going to look like from a conceptual standpoint. The first teams, the seven teams, submitted their recommendations. We posted them on the website on April uh, 9th. What you will see, or what you have already seen if you've gone to the website, are the unabridged work team recommendations. They haven't been censored, they haven't been filtered, and literally, the chancellor, the provost, and the vice chancellor for administration saw these recommendations at the same time as the rest of the campus community. And it, it's really been very important for us as a project team that we've allowed and empowered the work teams to speak in their own voice, and you'll see that um, as you review their recommendations. Throughout the, uh, the month of April, we've had a couple of web chats, forums like this, focus groups, and we're also um, enabling employees and students to provide input directly through the website. And then uh, the work teams, will, as I mentioned, will consider feedback and submit their final recommendations uh, in May, and then we'll uh, take it to the governance groups and other stakeholders. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, We'll try to synthesize the recommendations over the summer and then begin consultations with governance groups, as well as UW System, because UW System, at the same time we're developing our new HR system, the system is developing um, a new HR design for the other campuses. And we're working very closely because we know that there are going to be some areas where we have to be integrated with um, the system's new system. And then, as I mentioned, in the fall, we'll 
make the recommendations, uh, present them to the campus community for review and, and feedback, and then we'll begin to have conversations with outside organizations as well. So let's talk specifically about the recommendations themselves, and I'll go through each of the seven teams. On the, the benefits team, benefits team is still working. I think they kind of underestimated the scope and complexity of of the university benefits um, programs. So they are continuing to evaluate the need for additional benefits programs. But the headline here is greater consistency of benefits across employee categories, including classified and unclassified staff, coming up with some reliable metrics, some reliable ways to evaluate the extent to which our employees are satisfied with our benefits programs, also providing additional education about those programs and then some new benefits to, f to fill gaps that they've heard through various focus groups exist right now in our benefits programs. One of the things the team is recommending is to create a single unified benefits program that would combine what we have right now in the unclassified and classified um, categories. So create one unified benefits system. A lot of talk within the team about preserving benefits that employees value, including the Supplemental Health Insurance Conversion Credit Program. We had a lot of conversation on this campus last year, a lot of concern that this program was going to be discontinued. Um, there still is fear that someday it might be discontinued, and this team is recommending that we take steps to, um, to preserve it here on this campus, regardless of what happens elsewhere. Streamlining the Supplemental Insurance Programs. Feedback they got was, in some areas, we have a variety of different insurance programs. They're confusing. People really don't understand what the coverages are and are therefore in, not in a good position to make informed decisions. So they're recommending that we streamline some of those programs and provide new benefits like parental leave. They're also continuing to discuss a tuition remission benefit, which they've heard from uh, across the campus community would be um, a very welcome new benefit. Obviously, that has some, some serious financial implications. So they're considering that as well as some other benefits programs, and they will expand on their recommendations by the end of the month. So that's um, what we have in benefits. Oh, and also, as I mentioned, develop HR metrics so that we can continually and systematically assess the extent to which our employees are satisfied with our benefits programs and whether our benefits programs are enabling us to be an employer of choice. Compensation. The headline here is two things, market-based approach and greater emphasis on performance. Creating a formal structure to define market for individual jobs. In some cases, we're competing in a local labor market. In other cases, it's a regional labor market. In other cases, it's a national labor market. And we really haven't evaluated our place in the market in a systematic fashion, and they're recommending um, that we do that. And also, reference our starting pay and adjustments to the market midpoint. Not necessarily set pay at midpoint, but keep that in mind as we determine where we want to be in terms of starting pay and um, salary adjustments. Reviewing and updating the market information regularly. Here is the focus on performance, recognizing and rewarding expertise, contributions, and performance, creating a closer link between pay and performance. But the caveat there, and it's a critically important one, is if we are going to pay people based on their performance, we better be in position to evaluate performance in a way that is fair, objective, and transparent. And as this team looked around the campus, it learned that in some cases, some of our work units do evaluate performance in a way that is fair, objective, and transparent, whereas other units don't. And we need to have some consistency across the campus. So really, you can't have one without the other. And this is a point that this team repeatedly makes in its recommendations. Give hiring managers more flexibility to set starting pay. Um, uh, there is flexibility in some cases, but in other cases, managers don't have that flexibility. So we've created, if we create a single unified compensation system, one of the characteristics of that system needs to be giving managers more flexibility to set starting pay in order to meet the market and uh, uh, bring in the kind of talent that we need on our campus. Focus on total compensa compensation. 
Clearly, um, base pay is important, but also we need to be able to quantify the value of our benefits program so that, again, we're being transparent. We're letting our employees know what the value is of the total compensation package in a way that we don't do now. For positions that have compensation ranges, again, base those ranges on a market analysis, consider geographic location in cases where we have employees who are um, uh, not working here in Madison, and, and, and again, evaluate pay ranges regularly to meet the market. So the headline here is focus on the market, understand the market, peg our pay to the market, and link pay and performance. Competencies. This is a team that we asked to evaluate the feasibility of developing a set of core competencies, a competency being defined as a knowledge, skill, ability, or other characteristic that are important to our, to our university. This is a model that has been used in many other organizations, including some of our peer institutions. So they spent several months evaluating this, and their recommendation is to develop a set of competencies and apply those competencies to the full range of HR activities. So we ad identify a set of competencies. We then try to hire people who either have those competencies or can develop them. We evaluate job candidates based on those uh, uh, competencies. We do training and development around those competencies. We advance people based on those competencies. We pay people based on those competencies. And the companies also support our core values. They, they dug a little deeper into that issue, and they're recommending that we define a set of university-wide core competencies, the things that are critically important to achieving the mission of the university. They did not recommend what those competencies should be because we'll have to go through a process to identify them. They have presented some, some examples, though, from other universities of what they have identified as their core competencies. So this team is recommending that those competencies apply across the university community to all employees. In addition to that, define some additional competencies for critical positions uh, th uh, that are uh, leaders, managers, and supervisors. So again, we have transparency about what we expect our leaders and managers and supervisors to be good at and how we expect them to behave. Also supplement with unit-specific competencies that would be linked to a unit's mission or specific occupation. So there'd be sort of three levels of competencies, university-wide, um, specific to key occupations, and then unit-specific. And then they go on to recommend that these core competencies be made clear, transparent, and communicated so that everyone on campus knows what we think it's important for each of our employees to be good at we can train and develop around those competencies, advance people based on those competencies, and of course, help us achieve our mission. <clears throat> the team on um, workforce diversity really had a couple of, of different responsibilities. First of all, we asked that team to evaluate ways that we can maintain and enhance diversity, but we also asked that team to take a look at the recommendations from the other 10 teams to make sure that where it's appropriate, those 10 teams are also addressing diversity. So this team's work is also still in progress, and they are looking at the other team's recommendations just as the rest of the campus is also. But they have focused initially on measuring and improving campus climate, including ensuring new employees are welcomed into their new units, that we have an onboarding process that is consistent, that is effective and that enables new employees to fit into our culture as quickly as possible. Also, talked about the need to make sure that all of us understand that we have a role in creating and maintaining a positive workplace climate. It's something that we all need to take responsibility for, but in particular, employees who direct the work of others have an additional accountability responsibility to make sure to take the steps to ensure that the workplaces that they are responsible for have positive climates. Also expand and promote resources that provide diversity and equity related training and expertise. And as I mentioned, this team is continuing to meet after all of the other teams have completed their draft recommendations to evaluate how those recommendations 
um, the extent to which they are also addressing diversity. So there's more that we'll hear from this team. Employee categories. This team is recommending six. I'll get them all up here. With the exception of academic staff, most of the other five are roughly equivalent to what we have right now. For example, executive at will, they're essentially saying we should rename what is currently known as the limited category to, to, uh, to better reflect who these folks are. They are executives and they are at will employees. Faculty, post degree training, student hourly and student assistance, pretty much what they are today. The big change that they're recommending is with academic staff and they are recommending that employees who are currently classified employees be included in the category of academic staff. So academic staff would include current academic staff as well as classified employees. And um, we're already having a lot of conversation about this one. This is clearly a very controversial uh, recommendation. It has a lot of implications both for governance and for collective bargaining. So we're continuing to collect feedback to have this conversation at the end of the month. This team will decide whether or not it wants to move forward on this recommendation or modify it in some way. So this is clearly one where we want to have a conversation to make sure we understand the implications and um, what might be good about this recommendation and what might not be good about this recommendation. <clears throat> Recruitment and assessment focus here again like we saw in uh, some of the other areas in creating a single unified system to recruit and evaluate job candidates, combining what currently are two separate systems, at least two separate systems, one for classified and one for unclassified, and to make the hiring process more effective and efficient. Starting with creating uh, position descriptions, same campus-wide system to develop those descriptions and also the announcements that come out of the PDs, recommending that we create an internal recruitment process so that work units, um, where it makes sense, could limit applicants to those who are already university employees, and that would include, this team recommends, LTEs and project employment. So in certain specific situations, we could limit recruitment. Now, obviously, that also has some implications for diversity, so there's a balance here. Also recommending that we create a direct hire process, kind of like the waiver process for unclassified hiring right now, but to create a single unified direct hire process, which would, under certain circumstances, specific circumstances, allow hiring units to make direct hires. And there are about 10 of those circumstances um, that they have, they have identified, and they're, they're, they're enumerated in this team's recommendations. Also, focus on advertising for those positions where we are recruiting outside. We need to aggressively advertise, not just post a position on the UW-Madison website, and I don't think I did that, did I? Okay, anyway, you can see this, and here we are. Not just post it on the website, sometimes described as post and pray, but aggressively, aggressively market and advertise so that we are reaching out and bringing in um, the best talent. And uh, we would provide some centralized guidance and resources to enable the work units to do that. Um, assessment. Recommendation is to develop a central campus assessment toolkit, a variety of assessment techniques and approaches that hiring managers can select from to best meet their needs based on the type of job they're recruiting for, what the, the labor market looks like, et cetera. So provide a much wider range of assessment options than exist right now, and eliminate registers and ranking certification of applicants, particularly for classified jobs. So again, we want to create a single unified recruiting and hiring system, not the situation we have now where we have at least two separate systems. Also recommending that we um, implement technology and online system which would also integrate the various hiring systems right now, allow candidates to apply online and then have an integrated system to track those candidates all the way through the system uh, until they're hired to make it uh, easier for us to manage recruiting and also make it a little, user, a little more user friendly for job applicants. 
titles, uh, the last section, again, you're seeing a theme here to be consistent, to combine systems right now which are separate into a single system. Same kind of thing with, with titles and levels across current employee categories. Develop a system of job classification that has consistent design principles, and you see some of the examples of where this team believes the consistency uh, ought to be. Define titles broadly enough to facilitate employee movement and progression. Right now, we have 1,600 titles on uh, job titles on this campus. Many of them are extremely specific. Many of them have a single occupant. And there is a perception that the titling system um, is, is so restrictive that it really prevents our employees from developing and advancing. And this team believes that the titling ought to be more broadly defined. Consistent approach to create levels for these titles so that our employees have opportunities to advance. Those opportunities are transparent and people understand what they have to do to advance. There's a perception now that our employees don't understand that. Um, ensure that these titles and levels focus on job content and experience, not just length of satisfactory service without a shift in scope or responsibilities. So change what, dri what currently drives um, uh, movement across uh, and through our titling system. And simplify and consolidate titles. As I mentioned, we have 1,600. We've done quite a bit of benchmarking with other institutions, and um, we are at the high end in terms of the number of titles. There is one peer institution that has reduced the number of titles to seven. So we're not sure we're going to wind up. It'll be somewhere between seven and 1,600. Probably be closer to 1,600 than to seven, but there's certainly um, a range, a wide range, for us to consolidate these titles. And they're also recommending that we, we perform a job classification study to put into um, uh, place these recommendations. And this is something that would probably not be done by July 1st of 2013. We would put this structure into place, but then perform uh, a detailed job classification study um, to figure out how to implement this specifically. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it back to Harry and he's gonna describe what we're gonna do from here on in. Thank you, Bob. Is this on, everybody's able to hear me okay? Yes, great, so we've, we've been talking at you, now you have an overview. Hopefully this is helpful for you understanding. Everyone should have one of these packets. If you have one with a green cover, that's great because it tells you which rooms everybody's in. If you have one in a gold cover, that's also great in the sense that it's because so many people are here that we had to go into another batch. So find a green friend. <laughs> find somebody who has it and know that we have people outside there as well as signs to direct you to the session you want. There will be three 25-minute rounds of conversations. The first round will start at 2.10. So that way you can give feedback in the areas where you want to give that feedback and then move on to other areas but you can turn in the survey and give us feedback on any of these issues. You may also go online and provide the same kind of feedback. But the conversations are special because we can feed back from one another. We can learn from each other in community in a way that's very different from anything we can do if, as individuals, we go online. So please identify those places you want to go to. If an area is too crowded, please consider a different area for this time and then come back to that area for another round. The specific recommendations are the focus this afternoon. Please focus your comments on those recommendations. I know there is other feedback to give us. Give us that feedback via email or in subsequent sessions. Do you have the clicker? We can, you can give us the feedback today. You can fill out the survey. And again, you can go online. And then the last thing we wanted to make sure you're aware of is that, as Daryl said, this is the third of five different sessions. You can click that for it. Thank you. And that we will have another session on uh, the evening of the 24th for late night staff, just as we did here uh, last night. That will be at Memorial Union. And then we'll be seeking some initial phase two comments on the morning of April 26th. We will also be coming back to people with the draft recommendations from phase two during next month so that we can have a session like this. So we're wanting feedback about questions that are germane to them now before they have recommendations, which they'll be turning in in early May. And then we'll be coming back to get feedback after that. 
And as we've said earlier, this is not at any stretch the end of the story. We're going to be coming back for people's detailed feedback as we go throughout the process. So if you're interested in categories, you stay in this room. If you're interested in one of the other topics, then scatter and we will guide you. And like I said, find a green friend. Thank you very much. Hmm? We're in 1306. That's the categories room.